All right, it's been a while since I uploaded anything to this channel, so I thought I would take a bit of a dig into the Cubase sampler track. So I had a question on a comment from an older video on chopping up breaks about whether you can slice up or chop up samples and then trigger those some way in Cubase 12. So I'm using Cubase 12 and you definitely can do it. And I actually do it quite a lot using tools that are built into Cubase. And one of those tools is the Cubase sampler track. So we're gonna have a look at how you would go about chopping up a drum break in Cubase sampler track. So I've just got a folder full of breaks here. So, so that one sounds all right. So we'll go for that one. So you can either drag it over into the lower zone or you can right click and you can create a sampler track. Both ways work. Um, to do it into the bottom zone, you need to make sure you've got the sampler track open down there. So I'm just gonna drag that over onto there. If I just arm this track so it's monitoring the input, you'll see I'm now getting the sound out of that. So the first thing you'll notice is it's playing it really low pitched, and that's because the root note is not mapped yet. So if I just drag that little triangle along to there, you should now get it triggering at the right pitch. One of the other things you'll notice is it's velocity sensitive, so some of the hits are quite quiet. Now you might want that, but generally when I'm making breaks, I tend to want to have a uniform level, at least in the first instance when I'm programming it. So if you go over to the amp section on the right, click mod and then drag that velocity all the way down to zero. I'm getting a consistent velocity there across any of the pads. So what you'll notice is that as I hit the different pads, it's playing at different pitches. Now, that might be what you wanna do. You may just wanna trigger the one sample um, and just play it higher pitch to get it in time. So that would have been what they'd done in samplers years ago to get them in time, is to speed those samples up. Definitely better, I find, doing that than using something like a time stretch with a break because that's gonna squash it or stretch it and you're gonna get artifacts and it's gonna sound a bit nasty. But obviously what we're gonna look at here is chopping up breaks. So we wanna be able to chop up into individual slices. So if you look down at the bottom over on the left, you'll see this blue section and there's a button called Slice. And if we hit that and then we turn that on, what that's done is it's now sliced it up into individual hits. Now, because this is a pre-processed break and I'd made it quite tight, it's probably done a pretty good job of mapping these all across. And you can see it's automatically by default gone on to transient mode, which means it's detecting transients and then making a slice based on that. This was a pretty clean break, so it's done it quite nicely. But you might notice sometimes that some are a bit weird or some are missed. Now, you can change the sensitivity of it. So, so you can chop it based on whatever you want and you can also increase that sensitivity so it's finding all of the hits. So this one here, it chopped it where it didn't need chopping. What you can do is if you hold down Alt on the keyboard and then just click on that slice it will remove it and equally if we've got one where we need to add one in we can hold down alt and then click and if we just zoom in we can then drag until we get that where we want to go something i'd recommend doing is engaging this button here so snap to zero crossing and that just means that it's going to snap to the nearest point where the waveform goes through zero and that just helps to stop with any pops and clicks that you might get. Um, something that I also sometimes do is I'll use the fade ins or fade outs just to kind of tighten that up a little bit where I'm getting some pops or clicks on the end. So once you've got the slices, then you've got a couple of options what you do with them. So what you could do is just create a MIDI event in there and then you can just double click that and go in and you can get access to that and we could just draw them in. Or what we can do is, if I just move that out of the way, if we go back to the sampler track, you've got this little MIDI button down here and you can drag and drop the MIDI from the break into there. So what that's done now is it's taken uh, the MIDI from the slices that you've created and if we press play, it's now playing at 174. All in time. You can then go in and then you can just start to edit the hits.
Now, if we go back to the sampler track, we've got our basic beat. So however you go about doing that is up to you. Um, just have a look at the couple of the other features. You can obviously change the pitch then. So as we looked at in the first example, when you're first triggering it, you're changing the pitch and changing the speed. Now we've chopped it up, but we can still achieve that same sort of sound. Now we've sped it up by just increasing the pitch. We've also got a filter section in here. So if you've got a break where you just wanted the tops, for example, you could go in and you could put yourself a high pass filter. Or if you're cleaning up an old break, you might want to take out a load of the low end mud and rumble. And you've got some distortion in there that you can apply as well. If we go all the way along to the right, you'll also see you've got this amp mod, which is where I went to change the velocity. You can also use that to change the envelope of the hits. So if you want to tighten up even further, and then you can go in there and then you can drag that down. Now this is a break that I've already cleaned up quite a lot anyway, but if it's a really old break, then you might find that quite useful going in there and using that. So I'm just gonna have a real quick look at another example then. So I'm gonna pick another break. So I'm gonna right click on that sample, click create sampler track. Now we can see that waveform in there. We can do the same thing again, go to slice and we can hit slice and we can see it's added those transient slices and they look pretty decent. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna change it to manual and we're just gonna drop some in. So I'm gonna apply those to the first couple. Um, but what we can do is you can leave additional hits. So that will just give us a little bit of a different feel to our different triggers. So what we'll do is move our key zone further down just to make sure that it's triggering in the right place and go in and change the velocity. Something that we didn't look at in the first example is you've got this one shot button here. If you hit that, it will play the entire sample or the entire um, slice in one go. When we're playing something a little bit longer, like this, for example, it'll just play through just with one hit. It just means you don't have to hold the trigger pads or the keys down to get that to play in its entirety. So something else you can engage is the monophonic mode. So if you click that, it just means that you won't be able to get any overlap. It'll just, it'll chop out or it'll cut out the sample next time you hit a trigger. And then you can start to use that to map out your beats and breaks and stuff. And it's just a little bit different to chopping up every single little hit. Because what you're doing is you're retaining the character of the break and the groove of the break. If it's an old break, generally it's got a nice bit of swing in it anyway. It's sometimes nice to retain some of that when you're doing it. And that's essentially it. How you go about chopping up a break within your Cubase sampler track and um, starting to sort of build that into your own break. One other step you can do to take it a little bit further, if you want to do that, is if you go down to transfer to new instrument button here, it gives you a couple of options. One of them is Groove Agent. So if we click on Groove Agent, what it will do is it will then take all of those slices and map them across into Groove Agent. The good thing about that is that you get way more control. So within the sampler track, you're stuck with the pitch and settings overall. So you're affecting the whole break overall. So whatever you do in terms of pitch, filters, um, anything like that is affecting every single hit exactly the same. Whereas if you go over into Groove Agent, I'm just gonna drag that down onto here. So my MIDI is now playing on Groove Agent instead. Sounds exactly the same. And it's transferred a load of the settings across. You'll see the cutoff and um, the filters, any sort of other settings that we've got. We can then select each individual slice. It shows us the whole break, but it's showing us where the start and end markers are set. And we can then change those individually. We can apply fades. We can change um, the individual volume of hits. We can change the tuning of hits. and it just gives us way more control. Hopefully that's useful. Hopefully you've gained a little bit of something from that and shown you a couple of ways that you can use Cubase to slice samples and then go ahead and make your own beats and breaks. If you haven't done already, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.